Good morning, Guardians. The Hijabi Gamer here, and it is Friday again. And 2024 is more than halfway over. I uh, anyway, it's Friday, and as you can see, we are not in the tower. We are in the reef because yes, sometimes Zer does come to the reef. It's not very often. Guess is because you need to unlock the reef, so beginners can't, uh, you know, get to Zer immediately. However, if you were to go to the tower right now and go to the stairs to see the mark, you'll notice the mark isn't there. That's how you know immediately. Go to the tower, you don't see the mark. He's in the reef. All right. Um, reminder: This is Destiny One. Obviously, it's the reef. Um, Zer is only in the tower for 48 hours, so he arrives for me at 5 a.m. New York time. Um, we don't talk about that other state. It's kind of a secret that no one's allowed to know about. He arrives 5 a.m. New York time. He stays 48 hours. He leaves Sunday 5 a.m. New York time. So you got 48 hours to come, pick stuff up, and go. Lone Hawk, as usual for you, the usual reminder, that is 11 a.m. for you on Friday. And he departs by Sunday 11 a.m. So chop, chop, man, chop, chop. Um, he does have some good stuff this week. Anyway, anyone feeling any nostalgia for the reef? Yes, come on. Reef was awesome. There was a lot of, there was, it was just, yeah. I mean, you got, you got yes, Brother Vance over there with his candles. I'm wondering if they're going to, you know, cause any problems with the ship fuel that's all over the place as well. Anyway, Windsor is in the reef. He's always in one location. It's also fun to torment the women with their tablets. There's not one walking towards me. I usually stand in front of them and watch them, like, just drive them. Maybe I'll do that after. Anyway, he's right over here. He's always over here. Right. Hello, Hunter. Um, so first off, he has a weapon that if you do not have, you absolutely need. All right? If you don't have this, which is funny, I'm wear I'm doing this Zer video, right? And I'm wearing a Darvo back hoodie. All right. Darvo back from uh, Warframe. Where is it? Where is it? There's the Darvo. Anyway, Zalo Supercell absolutely is a weapon you need. If you don't have it, you need it. Um, you need it. Okay, so Zalo Supercell is great because, so here, I see, I even have it equipped because I was using it. So wait, you're getting Zalo Supercell and you are getting Shock Hazard, which I think is the good one. So you're getting this ornament, Shock Hazard, all right? Now, what makes Zalo Supercell so great? Okay, first of all, and the most important, important part about Zulu, Zalo Supercell. It is an arc weapon, an arc auto rifle that goes in your primary slot. Remember, this is, excuse me, this is Destiny 1. And if you'd notice, the majority of the primary weapons are kinetic weapons. You have a few exceptions, adept weapons that come from raids, and something like Zalo Supercell or Nekakasm. But the vast majority did not have an element. So that alone was one of the perks that made Zalo Supercell just, you gotta get it, right? Must get, okay? So that alone, yeah, that's a big deal for Zalo. But there's more to Zalo Supercell than just the fact that it is a primary weapon with arc damage, okay? Zalo Supercell, arc projectiles have the chance to chain lightning when enemies are close together. And they do, and it is awesome. And it is just like a, a wall of, like, like enemies getting like electrified all right it's great when you like have a whole bunch of cabal coming at you and they're all got their shields up yeah this thing is just awesome you just you have a whole bunch of arc lightning bouncing from enemy to enemy to enemy um i know some people have told me it's sort of like risk runner in destiny 2 i have used risk runner in destiny 2 but i don't know again it doesn't feel like the same like with destiny 1 but then the uniqueness of what made zalo super soldier so awesome isn't there in destiny 2 because you just, everything mixes at this point. You know, you can have arc, have, there's just no, like, none of the, like, kinetic were primarily, primar the kinetic was primary weapons kind of thing. But Destiny 2, you have hand cannons that do elemental damage, um, which you don't really have in Destiny 1. Next, you have, um, the other perk is Bolts from the Blue. Double kills with this we weapon, chance a small amount of super energy, and return ammo to the magazine. I mean, this thing is full of perks. It's got the chain lightning. It's got the arc as a primer. It's got double kills with this weapon charge. Super energy. And return ammo to the magazine. I mean, this thing is like just beefed up, buffed up awesomeness. I mean, come on. 
Xing Juice is full of it. This is when exotic weapons were exotic weapons. And you just had to keep reading. And you're like, perk after perk after perk after perk after perk. And I'm also wearing a vest, so. <laughs> Multi-layering at the moment. Um, so, yeah. It just, I don't know. Feels like Destiny doesn't, Destiny 2 isn't as bang as Destiny 1. But then I think the simplicity of Destiny 1 made it so that when you got things that were ridiculously powerful, they stood out from the experience. Whereas Destiny 2 keeps raising the power level, so they're having difficulty, like, surpassing the next big thing. I don't know. This is theory. Anyway, so that's Zala Supercell. If you don't have it, this should be the top priority for you. It is a great weapon. It's great when you have arc burn. It's great when you have, and this has happened, arc burn and like primary weapon burn. So then you get multiple burns at the same time. That's just awesome. You melt things then. Uh, I've had that happen with solar and I have a solar adept weapon. So just, yeah. Um, and arc burn seems to be the more common one. I feel like arc burn is the one we get a lot of. So this is great for arc burn. Then you have hawk moon and carrion. So hawk moon is right over here. Carrion isn't the ornament I like. This is Carrion. I do have it. Um, maybe I should just unlock it. So, Carrion I'm not a big fan of. Maybe I shouldn't have unlocked it. I could have gotten five silver dust. Um, I'm not a big fan of dirty weapons. I feel like if you take care of your weapons, the Guardian would take care of their weapons. I feel like a Guardian, given how much a Guardian relies on their weapons, would take care of their weapons. So, the moment it got dirty like that a guardian would clean their weapon off because it could rust it could, you know stick it could you know not a good idea so i'm not a big fan of that that's just me i think also this one just looks cooler absolutely but you will be getting that ornament the carrion um i'm not a big fan of hawk moon i know a lot of other people are i've done the whole mask for hawk moon since i could be dealing with new people i will give you the mask for hawk moon so hawk moon has random bullets that do considerable bonus damage. That's their words. It's weird when you play Warframe and you get all these percentage stats, right? You get all these percentage stats, when then you get Destiny, it's like considerable bonus damage. Whereas Warframe will be like, on a Sunday at 5 a.m. you get a 5% boost, but if it were a Monday and it were on on a at 5 p.m. versus 5 a.m., it could be either for, for 6%, but depending on what Warframe you're using, it might be 7% or se or 4%. But if you're using Corpus, if you're if you are doing an invasion mission on the side of the Corpus, and the Corpus that you're doing the invasion mission happen to be uh, sniper corpus, then you gain a 10% bonus. That that that's Warframe. The car, the mod cards are like a mile long sometimes. Whereas in Warframe, it's not Warframe. In Destiny, it's like considerable bonus damage. Right. So look in the chamber. One random bullet in the magazine causes considerable bonus damage. Then you have here, holding aces. Two more random bullets in your magazine deal considerable bonus damage. So you have three bullets that will deal considerable bonus damage. Right. Now, the magazine is 13, right? Fully unlocked, the magazine is 13. However, to make the math easier, we go with 12, okay? So, magazine at 12, three bullets do considerable bonus damage. Three random bullets. That means one out of four, okay? 25% of the bullets in your magazine will do considerable bonus. So, you basically have a one in four chance of getting this magic bullet. Which, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I'm not a big, I mean... It's different in Warframe, right? When you have like 500 different grenades just running at you. And so you are unleashing a magazine. You're basically unleashing like one, like 1,300 bullets, right? You're dealing with, because it's a mob kind of horde kind of situation, 9 out of 10 times. Or you've got like an army of infested and you're standing there, right? Then that 25% is a big deal. Because you're shooting so many bullets that you, hundreds of them are going to be, yeah. Destiny isn't the same. And so, to me, this seems like, especially, I don't know, I don't see, I know people have told me Hawkmoon is great in Crucible. I don't see how it can be very good in Crucible because one out of four, you have a chance of bonus. At this point, it's just like you might as well just hope the whole bullet does all the damage you need. You know, you may not get that bullet you need when you when you got that other guardian in the crossfire. Just let me know in the comments. I really want to know why people like Hawkmoon. Because I have never liked Hawk, Hawkmoon, but I know a lot of people really like Hawkmoon. I mean, it looks cool. Don't get me wrong. It does look cool. But comment down below. All right, next, what do we have? We have 
Super good advice. All right. Super good advice is a machine gun. Now, it's a solo machine gun. I will admit I'm not very familiar with super good advice. Um, it is a solo. It's, it's, I'm trying to remember it. Crowd control. Super good. Missed shots may be returned to the magazine. Landed shots may be replaced in the magazine from your reserves. Okay, that's kind of disappointing. I mean, okay, no. All right. So, first off, again, it's the lack of, like, percentages. So, it may be returned to the magazine. So, you really don't know if it... That's one of the other things. Because somebody was telling me about the uh, respawn being so much faster with the... The thing is, what are the chances that missed shots will be returned to the magazine? Is it 5%? So, then it's, like, pfft, not worth it. Or is it 50%? So, it seems okay. Um, it is an exotic... Um, it is a solar machine gun. Um, I feel like, I, I don't remember, I feel like machine guns were rare. No, no they weren't. Landed machi I think that was in Destiny 2 in the beginning, machine guns were very rare. And um, like when Avalanche cam came with Eva Levante at one point, everyone made a big deal about it. I don't remember the deal. It's been, I've been playing Destiny 1 since like 2016, all right? And Destiny 2, so it's been years. So, you know, over time, you, yeah, things start to fall out, okay? Um, landed shots may be replaced in the magazine from your reserves. I mean, that's good. That's definitely good. That's an ace, a, ace of spades kind of thing. Landed shots may be replaced in the magazine, f but maybe, maybe, and you don't know how much. So comment down below what you think of super good advice. Is it super good advice to use it? I'll admit, I've said this before, I'm not a really big heavy weapon, um, exotic person. All right. Cause I have, for example, I mean, this one here. Walkers create cluster bombs when they detonate, and the, sh the launching tube can hold three shells, which is great. But I've always shown off my Hunger of Crota, which has tracking and cluster bombs. And so, it's not an exotic, it's a legendary, and it's got tracking and cluster bombs. And that's all I need in a good rocket launcher. Um, so, comment down below. Like I said, I I'm more of a primary person, because you have so much more primary ammo when you're running through it. So I'd rather have something, use an exotic that I'm gonna use a lot more and benefit from it a lot more, depending on the exotic. I mean, I've got the Kvass stuff here too. Anyway, cool. Now let's look at the gear and who does it, oh, not the Christopher Alpha Loopy. All right, Warlock, uh, Titans, what did you get? You got the MK42 stand aside. And I seriously think some of these names are ridiculously long. MK44 stand aside. I wonder what they call it in combat, like when they're getting ready to go out on a fire team mission. Yo, Titan, you bring your MK44 stand aside, or do they have like a nickname for it? So what does this thing do? Increase the duration of shoulder charge and tighter turn radius while sprinting. Titan, so comment down below. Does it make a difference? Because again, it's like, like I said, there's that unknowingness of it. Like for example, all right, for example, Raiden Flux is the hunter exotic chest piece for Destiny 2. For the, um, the Arc, oh god, my brain, Arc Strider, Arc Strider. I haven't played Destiny 2 in like a month, okay? The Arc Strider. When you use the Raiden Flux, alright, I didn't even realize, I just, I noticed it was longer. When I stop you, when I take the Raiden Flux off, you notice a massive difference in how long your super lasts. So, it doesn't tell you how long, you have to figure it out for yourself. So, Titans, let me know. Does this matter? Is the duration increase good? Does it help you? Comment down below. I'm not really a Titan person. I'm more of a Hunter person. All right? Next, for the Hunters, we have the Crest of Alpha Loopy. And it really... Okay. Revive fallen teammates and be revived faster. I just want to know, does it make that much of a difference? I mean, is it one second? Or is it like... Is it a massive difference when you do this? Supers generate an extra orb. I mean, does it actually? If you are in the middle of a raid and your hunter has a choice of exotics, does the crust of Alpha Loopy make a difference for you or not? Um, usually, we're not reviving people in raids. It's just a wipe and you start all over again. Okay. I don't know. Comment down below. Um, I feel like I, if I were running a raid, I would rather have something that will allow me to do more damage than be revived faster because for one thing I don't want to need to be revived so better to have a good offense that leads me to not need to be revived and be like 
Yeah, I can revive everybody faster. So comment down below. Let me know. I really want to know. Like, someone was telling me, like, stuff about it. But I just, I don't know. I feel like it's just not good enough. So I'm putting the hunters not really high up. And finally, for the warlocks, we have the Void Fang Vestment, which I've heard decent things. Spawn with full grenade energy and your Axion Bolt grenade spawns an additional seeker. As an offensive person, I will give this first place. You get full grenade energy on spawn. I mean, I don't really like anything this week. Nothing stands out as being bang for your buck. But it could be worse. So spawn with full grenade energy and your Axion Bolt gets an additional seeker, which is pretty cool. So comment down below. Warlocks, do you like the fact that you win this week? What do you think? Is this a good item or am I being unfair to you guys? Comment down below. Anyway, then we have the usual other stuff. One can never have enough. Um, this is but one end. Heavy ammo since, of course, the looking for one of the women with their iPads. Um, one can never have enough heavy ammo since. Don't waste your time with the sparrows. There's a whole bunch of other better sparrows. That, that was a disappointment when I did it. Um, where the iPad? There's an iPad lady. Color the, they, they look like they're walking around with iPads, all right? Make them there, pay. see? Check Hi. The tags Hi. On every ship up what you looking at? What you looking no at? What you looking at? What you looking at, woman? Guardians. Start walking. What, am I in your way? Am I in your way? Sometimes they move. See, like that. I absolutely love pissing these women off. What you looking at, woman? What you doing? What you doing? Are you watching YouTube? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? You know, it's dangerous to walk around looking at an iPad. You could fall off the edge. That would be hilarious, by the way, before I head out. Would not be hilarious when the queen is sitting on her throne and she's like, I summon Sumbana Nuna or something. And then one of the other women goes up to her and says, my queen, I bring grave news. What, my slave? Sibana Nuna was busy on her tablet and was not paying attention. And she fell off the edge of the reef. What? What have I told you about using your tablet while walking on the reef? Don't look at the tablet. Yes, your majesty, we are sorry. We tried to stop her. A guardian kept teasing her with her about her tablet. All right, come on. Okay, just... You fall off the reef, you die. Okay? And unlike us, they don't... I don't think they come back. Okay? So, can you imagine? She walking with her tablet and falls off the edge of the, re edge of the reef. Anyway... Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let's see what's going on in the world. I will be around. Uh, it's been cool. And I uh, hope to see you at the tower.